for Carnage Gaming. The right to get this underway will be taken uh, with an interesting Warden walk to start for this P.E.K.K.A. Smash strat. Yeah, he tends to use the P.E.K.K.A. Smash on every single one of his attacks, and he starts out for Carnage Gaming as well. He only did get the one three star in their first matchup. Since then, he's actually struggled a lot with this attack and it is not what he would need against the Queen Walkers in the final of this qualifier. Look at the Earthquake there. Activates the Battle Builder Hoods, but actually will loosen up the hit points on all of the buildings. And since the Grand Warden is quite slow, it's just going to speed him up a little bit, Woody. I'm also noticing the Rage spell drop for the Grand Warden. He wasn't really in any danger of going down, so it's almost entirely for the sake of speeding up this early stage and just trying to get things set up perfectly mm. for the next round. The snipe of this Eagle Artillery is exactly what Fabian needs to confidently get underway uh, with this P.E.K.K.A. army. He's still holding on to a couple of healers wow. as well, so he knows that there's no damage uh, or danger really at all to this Grand Warren. It's just about having perfect positioning for the follow-up, which is now underway. The Ice Golem is dropped. That's going to be soaking shots for the main phase of this army as the laboratory goes down there. The witches are going to be added on to complement that Barbarian King for additional cleanup along the outer edge. Log launcher rolling straight through, and this is an aggressive three-star attempt to be sure, not holding any punches as he's going to have to go all the way to the far side for that Town Hall. He's giving it what he can. I don't think I have ever seen a Grand Warden walk as long as that one minute and 20, but obviously felt he had the wow. value. But more importantly, the pathing for the smash. Notice how the king has taken down the left hand side with the log launcher opening up everything. There is nowhere for the P.E.K.K.A. to go, but into that town hall area. He has the jump spell for the back end of the base, but can he have them Dodge the poison from the Town Hall, Woody. That is the main question right now, as we see the Royal Champion also sneaking in from the left-hand side. Only 40 seconds and 40% left to gain. A terrifying CC to watch come out. The Ice Golems, the big, bulky, slowing monsters shutting down this attack. They aren't able to get any kills off on these attackers, but it's going to be the time in the end that is going to be the last villain that Fabian has to face off against. 15 seconds now as he's jumping over every wall he can find, firing off at anything in sight, but holding on to another free spell he had. He's just wishing that he could have had another few seconds to get this thing done. Spreading out his damage as best he can, he finds a two-star 96% wow. end for his first strike against the Queen Walkers. So, so close for him. The Grand Warden walk, despite committing multiple rage spells, did end up costing him. You've always got to be careful on time. I think that was a fantastic plan. The base was crushed, but at the end of the day, you only get three minutes. So it's not what Carnage Gaming needed. Queen Walkers need to take advantage of this, though. They did have a couple of lower percentage attacks in their last war so they are going to have to make sure they get the three stars because 96 percent is pretty high woody it certainly is it's setting a high bar but i think that the queen walkers are up to the task three star machines they're going to be coming in with somewhat of a similar ground-based pekka smash strategy but a little bit on the bulkier side choosing to bring in a golem this time and uh supplementing with a. Uh, an array uh, of troops here, a, a headhunter to try to help things out. He's going to be busting in with a super wall breaker. Uh, as we've mentioned before, the Queen Walkers are well known for bringing uh, a vast uh, army, lots of different spells, lots of different troops, uh, and just finding the perfect positioning and usage for each one of them to maximize their chance at the win. But a Warden Walk, uh, just the same as the last hit, slow to start. Yeah, and the Queen Walkers advancing through the upper bracket have actually played half of the matches that Carnage Gaming have. They've only played two matches, this being their third, and Carnage Gaming have had four matches prior to this. Stadra did use this attack in those two matches, though. 
and he crushed the base convincingly with those. Now you see the Grand Warden getting the multi inferno, and it's just past the one minute mark. This is around about the time we typically see with a Warden walk, and that would have been the difference maker in that last attack. But where is the king going here, Woody? I think he wanted the king into that area with the eagle, but I could be wrong. I've only just glanced up there, but he's on the outside of the base. Oh, it's on champion. the outside, may not be an ideal situation here, but able to get some cleanup along the outer edge, he'll certainly find some value. Log Launcher once again gaining in even more prominence at the pro level as Stadra takes it to the walls built up on the interior here. Going to be able to uh, find his way straight to that town hall and claim the second star here with a little bit over a minute left for additional cleanup along the outer edge. One jump spell he had been holding on to will be used to try to bridge the gap here and bring these two armies together. What are you making of his chances at a triple judo? He's lost a lot of the force through the middle, but I still think he can get this because he has a rage, he has the invisibility, the queen's ability, and some leftover troops. He's got a baby dragon, which Stadra did use successfully in that last attack. Basically, once the defenses start thinning out, you can target the ground-based defenses as he did on the left-hand side with the cannon, forces the royal champion across to this side. 36 seconds, he has the spells, wouldn't need them at this stage, but he will probably use the them anyway that's typically what we see from the queen walkers there you see making sure the royal champion gets the wizard tower it is the three stars for stadra of the queen walkers taking an early lead in this grand final and if they win this war they gain their golden ticket pumps his fist in the celebration is well earned stadra finds a victory right off the bat and puts queen walkers on a stride toward victory a long slog entry is well rewarded as the entire base uh, is perfectly shaped up by Stadra with attack on the bottom and the Barbarian King up top uh, to squish and chomp out the remainder of the defenses. Stadra here with his P.E.K.K.A. Smash Army showing uh, just what you can do when the Warden Watt goes right with that sort of attack. Absolutely, but we see is using the inferno dragons and the dragon riders we've kind of seen this a little bit across this weekend but i don't think i've seen him use it he used the hydra and the dragon riders but not the inferno dragons yet so i wonder what he sees in this base and i believe the queen walkers used this base yesterday I'm trying to think about the team that it was i guess it was gh rest uh, no I can't remember who they went up against, actually. Maybe it was Tribe they used this base against. But anyway, it definitely was an attack with this. He's already taken down the Town Hall and the Inferno Dragons pushing in from the right-hand side. Yeah, if you thought that the air-attacking metagame was stable before this weekend, you have certainly got a new thing coming because there are all sorts of different combinations being mixed together. Balloons, Inferno Dragons, and Dragon Rider, a heavier-based comp this time that does favor attacking enemy defensive structures but will be able to burn up with mighty dps gains uh whenever the defenses aren't able to tack onto those inferno dragons unfortunately though for diz this just looks to be uh like a dizzying feat uh, to continue past the midpoint here he's lost so many of his troops he's really just relying on the heroes uh for 30 percent of the base left and that's a gigantic compartment to have to crack into in the left corner Enemy Archer Queen firing along with a Barbarian King to bolster her defense. This is going to be a tough nut to crack, Judo. I still got abilities and the odd spell. It could happen, but I'm, I'm just so surprised to use the dragons or any form of dragons because it was against Tribe Gaming that we've seen this base, and it was a dragon attack. I think it might have been Knowledge, but he attacked from the left-hand side. Dragons really fell short. Is he going to get this? Oh, the RC gets the scatter shot, which is huge, Woody, because the wall is open for the Archer Queen to get in towards the single. He's got his head in his hands, but he's got this. I mean, 
he can celebrate. Queen steps in. He's got the freeze. He's got the ability. Just it will the be freeze. the three star for Carnage Gaming, keeping the pressure on the Queen Walkers. And remember, it was only a 96% that they failed with. So they've still got a high percentage. They can still leapfrog the Queen Walkers here if the Queen Walkers were to lower the momentum. Yeah, it, it looked like he was a bit concerned about the end there, clasping his hands together and just uh, showing relief at the end. But I'm pretty sure if we took a look back at that attack, despite having not too many troops at the end, it was a pretty convincing victory when all was said and done. This man might be a doctor because he smacked that base like a birthday baby's bottom. Excellent three-star and a chance to make a comeback here now for Carnage Gaming, uh, having missed that triple right off the bat. If there's anything short of a three-star return fire from the Queen Walkers, it's an opportunity now for Carnage Gaming to turn this thing around. Oh, it's Gaku with the Queen Charge Dragon Riders. He did only get the 78% when he lost his Queen in the matchup earlier on today. Let's see what is inside that Clan Castle. Carnage surely using the rocket balloons here to try and trip them up as the balloon drifts in. I'm keeping my eye on that clan castle and it, it looks like it's a lava hound actually. So fairly safe here for Gaku to be able to take that down and continue the charge. Cool under pressure. Gaku wants to be the best in the world. A player who has earned over 7,000 trophies in the Legend League to score a global number two positioning. He is certainly among the best uh, and is seeking to prove his prominence here on the battlefield with an aggressive queen charge straight in here. Not since the likes of Bernal have I seen queens go so deep early on and find great value. So I know Gaku is uh, learning from the best, but he's also teaching me a few lessons while he's at it. Yeah, he certainly is a top, top player. And I think this is where the Queen Walkers have that advantage. They are so unpredictable. What do Carnage Gaming start to think about putting in the Clan Castle? Because, I mean, what are you going to try and defend? So no matter what they put in there, they never know what the Queen Walkers are going to do. I do feel he wanted his Queen in towards that multi-target Inferno in the center, though. Difficult wall break. It went off to the side. But either way, if not, the Queen's pretty safe. She will move around to that scatter shot, take that down. And he should still be pretty good for the Dragon Riders because he has the Stone Slammer. He can drift in from the bottom left in order to keep the Dragon Riders through the middle to the Multi Infernos. There's only a minute left, but other than time, this looks very good, Woody. Yeah, that queen is like a secret agent. Infiltrates the enemy base, wipes it out. Extraction and re-entry to another compartment along the outer edge, finding high value targets every single time. We've called it before. Whenever the attack goes well, it's almost always because the queen is still alive at the end, having obliterated major sections of the base. That is what makes the queen charge so iconic within every different attack composition if you've got a good queen charge opportunity you almost always want to take it gaku took it here and he is well rewarded for it a second triple for the queen walkers just as long as the cleanup goes according to plan as long as these minions don't find an air bomb or uh, something other awkward on the top side i think they'll be able to get everything done I have to say, I think the Queen Walkers are my favorite team to just watch the cam. I was watching Gaku for majority <laughs> of the last minute of that attack. It's just fantastic to see them and the class that they have, the three stars keeping their perfect streak going. They are certainly not looking back here. And I have to say, look at when the Dragon Riders came in around about 1.15. He still had a bunch of time left on the clock. That is how much value he got from the Queen, the Dragon Riders literally smashed the rest of the base look there's burning a base and then there's turning a base into the past tense gaku really stepped all over it and i don't think that we'll be seeing that one again just such a dramatic victory with quite a bit of time left and so many troops uh, on the battlefield victory for him here uh might just be the next biggest step for the Queen Walkers toward their victory. But let's see if Viking has got anything to say about it. Having picked up an impressive win of his own in the lower bracket, maybe even uh, being responsible for the pickup win over GH Rest, Viking was one of the three-star strikers uh, who really came to prominence. And because he's running uh, a bit more of an old-school strat here, the La Loon, uh, maybe we get a chance to see if older attacks can still hold water uh, in a Dragon Rider meta. 
Yeah, interesting to pick this. Maybe he just felt like the base was trying to defend something else, but he is going in with the queen charge, which really does question that theory. But anyways, he has been very prominent, as you said, Viking, getting the three stars last war, and he's only missed one this entire weekend, which was a 98%. Queen Charge is going pretty smoothly at the moment, that one headhunter helping to take out the Barbarian King, and if he can get the Queen through this area, he's trying to just set up the pathing for the Lalo, but I'm not sure what he's doing for that central multi-target Inferno. Well, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he's got some sort of plan for it. He's got a great work on oh, the air defenses so far. I still really only see one over at 9 oh. o'clock that's going to provide any difficulty for him. But what are you picking up on, Judo? The wall break didn't make it to the core. I didn't even oh. realize he had wall break left. I was looking at the army composition, expecting a jump, but he had a wall break to get the queen to the multi. It's not going to happen. There's rocket balloons coming out. He's had to freeze them. Oh, no. Queen ability is gone. He's not going to be able to get into that core, I don't think, for the multi-target Inferno. Maybe the queen can batter through the wall in order to get there, but there is bound to be red air bombs there, wiping out the lava loon, especially with two scatter shots looming so he needs the warden ability to be absolutely perfect wait for it there it is can they get through oh they've gone the other way uh not cracking in toward the inferno tower where's that royal champion at is she going to be the saving grace she, can she make her way toward these infernos and the scatter shot that could be excellent double value for her if she can knock that shield off where's so it going though <laughs> Oh, which way is he trying to just hold on to it? He's got the invisibility. I think he might turn the RC invisible first. Actually decides to pop the shield. Try and help the balloons. Oh, the Royal Champion goes the other way, but he should okay. still be okay here, I think. He should be able to swarm the multi. Let's keep our eyes on any red air bombs. Two bombs. giant bombs for the RC, but is it enough? Oh my gosh. She's done it. Royal Champion takes down the Inverno Tower, and that's all she wrote. Viking gets the three star after all. Carnage Gaming with an impressive follow up have a total now of eight stars, and really just a small slip up at the out the gates. They could very well still take this from the Queen Walkers. They are holding them to account, Judo Sloth. Four percentage points is all they dropped. They are making sure that if the Queen Walkers slip up, they are hot on their heels, ready to take the lead. The Queen Walkers are still in the advantage. They need to just continue tripling out. But as Itsu says, it's always harder said than done, isn't it? Or easier said than done. All they need to do is three star. But on the same token, it is the Queen Walkers, Woody. They... They are just so, so impressive. And Stars, I broke down his last attack for us. He has been crushing bases this weekend. Going in with the Dragon Riders, but Ice Golems looks like a hero dive alongside the Blizzard. Exactly what he did in the previous attack. It almost seems like the least that I can say about Stars, that he was the MVP from the monthly pre-qualifier, having picked up seven out of seven straight one star strikes the man's name is stars and he has certainly earned it judo he also picked up a three star of course against gh rest and tribe gaming he is perfect nine for nine this month and he is looking to make it 10. oh he lost some of his super wizards there which is a little bit unfortunate he still gets the pathing created lured the clan castle troops but he could have maybe took out the archer tower on the right hand side i don't think stars is too disappointed about that it is just one archer tower but as the queen comes in again, I'm surprised that Carnage Gaming are going with multiple Lava Hounds in their clan castle, to be honest with you. Again, maybe just expecting something different from the Queen Walkers, but this Archer Queen aiming to get in towards the Town Hall. He's got the two Ice Golems as well, just holding on to that whilst the Queen takes out the clan castle. Because obviously he doesn't want them taking unnecessary damage. Here we go. He's diving into towards that town hall, trying to just thin out the area for the Dragon Riders. And he's going to try and take the entire right-hand side of the base down, Woody. 
He did allow the single target to lock on the uh, Archer Queen, though, so that's going to force out that invisibility spell, protecting his troops as he makes his way into this top compartment. It's all eyes on the top. He needs to get this early strike to work, and I think he might just have done it. The Ice Golem gets the freeze on the Inferno Tower, and that's going to save even more spell and ability usage. There we go. The lock on the Town Hall, and it is going down. Stars claims the first star, and look at all of the carnage over on the right side of the field. He's almost gotten the second star as well, and is now ready to start the main phase of the attack. Dragon Rider storming in up top, and he has support from the Grand Warden. This is going to be a long haul fight to the end, but he might just have the perfect setup to claim that triple. How do you even come up with a plan this complex? Look at the Royal Champion in the middle is still going. She took out the multi-target Inferno. There comes the Headhunters, arguably a little bit late towards that Archer Queen, but just look at everything he is deploying. He's also cloning balloons at the bottom of the base, Woody, for the single target Inferno. I can't believe what I am watching. How on earth do you think about doing this stuff this base is history stars you are incredible there is nothing else to say three stars wow i am speechless woody that was amazing something else is printed on his shirt and boy is that true stars is not a man he is a monster just imagine the sort of careful planning necessary to execute such a difficult attack this guy skipped recess because he don't play stars is 10 for 10 this season with all three stars and might just have been able to lay claim now to the MVP from any team so far this year. Just watching on that replay as at every moment he was deploying the odd little goblin or minion to clean up here and there as the attack was progressing. Incredible stuff. We have Anonymous though. Remember Carnage Gaming, they have continued to get three stars. Their only slip up was that 96%. They've got to just keep the pressure coming to the Queen Walkers. And there we have the rocket balloons coming out. But with the Yeti blimp method, it's not going to be a problem here. He's already taken out this area, trying to charge his queen in towards the town hall. With terrifying rapidity too. It's like Anonymous didn't want to let Stars hold that limelight any longer than necessary. He is already moving in hot, getting that CC pull out and dropping spells left and right to neutralize any threat he comes up against. The Queen charge right into this Town Hall compartment. It's going to get some early uh, significant value here, but the lock from the Inferno Tower is going to force out an additional spell usage here. Keeping an eye on the rest of the army backed up later on, we are back to that older style hybrid strike with a bigger emphasis on miners than hog riders. That suggests to me that he doesn't necessarily need to focus too heavily on defensive structures because he's going to lean on this queen charge to get the early work done. Loses a few hogs to a spring trap though, and that might be uh, a hitch in his plan. Hybrid in from the top will hopefully force the queen down towards the multi and the scat shot. Leaving that multi left over is a tough play, but look at that one wall breaker, Woody. Comes, comes all of the way to the center Crap. in order to give the queen pathing towards that scatter shot. If she can get that down soon, it will be very helpful for the hybrid. Healers are it? across onto some of the hog riders. There's a lot in the center of the base here still to go down. Oh no, she doesn't take the path to the scatter shot, and that's oh. going to be massive splash damage all over Anonymous's raid. You have been identified, sir. He has looked up your number, and the call has been placed. Send in the troops because there is nothing to defend now against the massive damage from that scatter shot. That is the one slip up that any big mass attacker has got to avoid happening a lock onto your healers your hogs or your miners and that scatter shot will obliterate them like a boulder of destruction firing away into an avalanche of chaos anonymous will be left with a two star because the scatter shot stood I do question the Yeti blimp at the very start. Was that misplaced? Was he aiming to get the multi-target Inferno to the right-hand side? Because the pathing that was created really wasn't that difficult in terms of the funneling for the Queen. I think getting that multi would have been far more valuable, but where he placed it seemed very specific to get the Yetis to the left-hand side of the wall as they did go. 
but I wonder if maybe he'd have got them a couple of tiles across and got the multi alongside it. Maybe that would have gone better for him. Difficult to say, but that really now puts Queen Walkers at an advantage because it's the second slip up for Carnage Gaming. Always tempting to take the five head analysis approach there, but I mean, at the end of the day, the scatter shot stood, and that is just going to be the end of any mass hybrid raid. Well done there to Anonymous, but Carnage Gaming with their second miss there are giving Queen Walkers the awful opportunity, the terrifying chance, the last big um attack from Klaus is going to end it right here and now. The triple from him will put them at 12 stars uh, out of those four attacks and virtually uncatchable by Carnage Gaming. Come on, Klaus. I feel he was devastated in his last attack because obviously he got the two stars yesterday and he wanted to turn that around the 99 percent i really hope he gets this one just just for him because i could see how beaten up he was starting with the battle blimp and the blizzard he's managed to get the super wizards i'm not sure into the right compartments here i pretty pretty sure he wanted them in next to the queen and the scatter shot but they popped just one tile away Four invisibility spells left over. Interesting, Woody. A stone cold killer to the end. If you're looking for a present from Klaus, don't expect much more than coal in your stocking. He has got so much ferocity. He uh, only lost to the Unicorns of Love in the prequel fire matches. Tweeted that out. Then later tweeted out the victory over Tribe Gaming with just nothing else than a quizzical question mark. Like, is that the best that you can really send at us? He's about to send that same message now to Carnage Gaming as Hugo Stiglitz defenses are cracking and crumbling to this early incursion on the bottom of the map with, holy moly, <laughs> is that three different ice golems to insulate this attack? Yep. It certainly is. It's Klaus, Woody. Uh, expect anything. Look at them go as they get into the middle. He's going to be able to take down the multi-target Inferno, but also the scatter shot across to the left. He's only just deploying the Royal Array as well, turning his heroes invisible. He's still got Ice Golems yet to pop. The Queen can get across to that multi-target Inferno. The Lalo pathing is shaping up lovely here but I do wonder where he's going to send it because the sweeper is pointing across to that right hand side he's jumped across to the town hall no way is he pushing his heroes to the town hall what is going on right now I'm super confused as to why he popped that Archer Queen ability so early, but I think he's going to get protection from that single target Inferno thanks to the archers that stormed out of there. If he can knock that down, that's another really big step that he's able to take off this base, oh, but unfortunately no. just came ever so short. Drops a late freeze spell, a bit of a yikes moment there. An opportunity to have knocked that th big thing down, but at least he gets some insulation for his Laloon push. Big uh, oh, air defense though, still no. in that right side corner. And this is just gonna be too much. I was feeling hopeful when he finished off the multi-target Inferno right there in the center of the base, because that has so often been the end point uh, for raids against Hugo Stiglitz. But nonetheless, we're gonna see the first time that Carnage Gaming has successfully defended against the Queen Walkers now. Oh, that plan was incredible. Charging all of the way through. He didn't have anything left over for the town hall to haste the balloons out from the poison but he did have to start the loon over uh, the lava loon over there at the end of it because well you don't want to get that one star do you i feel the blizzard at the start just held him up a little bit had to switch where he sent the lava loon in and that hero push was incredible but at the end of the day it did not happen for him that is a big slip up in terms of where the war is positioned because carnage gaming could easily now take the percentage advantage if they are going to three star and con continue putting on the pressure because their percentage would be better well, it's been a tough month for Klaus, to be sure, has not managed to get the three star in any of the three attacks so far. Blunder estimates the base that Hugo Stiglitz sets up against him uh, and gives one little tiny sliver of hope now for Carnage Gaming. Mm. They've got uh, an advantage on the percentage game. So a triple here from Carnage might still be enough uh, to get the victory. 
slim as that possibility might be, Carnage Gaming have got their hopes out for their last final best attacker, Hugo Stiglitz, a world's vice champion. Here he goes. Well, he has got three stars throughout, and yeah, like we mentioned, Queen Walkers would have to three star in order to get it done. U to 14 left to go. He's also defending right now. So can he can he take a little bit of pressure off himself by getting the defense here as the super minions were battling against the queen? Hugo did realize the rockets were moving on into that queen, so decided to use the rage just to preserve the ability. Always so precise with the wall breaks as they continue to charge the queen through he does not have a jump spell though and he can't really oh he's going to send the king into the town hall i was going to say he can't get the wall break to get in towards the uh town hall and allow the queen access king finds a tesla farm down there though woody that is going to slow him up in terms of getting to that town hall he surely was not the only attacker expected to take that thing down, though. And so even though he's met a Tesla farm, the invisibility Ooh. spell now might give him even more value if he can take oh. out a few more of those key defenses. Finishes it off and with a rage to add on top. Will he be able to get the it's lock and drop up this town hall? It's not happened. He had to ah. now had to send in the royal champion. Now the king has taken out all of the defenses, so the royal champion should be able to get that town hall and start cleaning up. The issue here is that Hugo Stiglitz needs the three star, and he had to adapt. And basically, he's now not got the royal champion when he expected that with the dragon riders. You see the multi-target inferno in the center taking down the healers. They are history. Oh. Queen is about to go down. It is not looking good at this stage. He to rescue this attack now languishing from the long range of that inferno tower just burning through the healers and archer queen he's running so little on offense left that it is just the final stand for carnage gaming hugo stiglitz sends it all in the last possible maneuver to keep his team alive it's all or nothing a triple or you are sent packing the last lines of defense standing strong as the final wave of minions crashing in with just two more dragon riders they've locked onto their targets and are trying to clean up as best they can but 23 seconds stands between queen walkers and their golden ticket judo oh my gosh hugo stiglitz getting caught out by the tesla farm you've seen how powerful he is as an attacker this is an incredible turnaround to try and get it done the tornado trap really wow. solidifies the two-star attack uta 14 did get the defense his base held off hugo stiglitz and it was the base layout that did that hugo stiglitz had to try and adapt his plan he did a great job at doing so but not enough after the king didn't get the town hall and now you to 14 just needs the two star attack in order to give his team the victory carnage gaming has so much to be proud of for their performance here today and it is just the fickle fate of these massive heroes to come in with all of their might and just emerge with a two-star 97%. It is really a make-or-break style of game here that we see at the Clash of Clans World Championship, where even the best can just fall away and wither uh, with what seems like one of the greatest attacks against one of the strongest bases. Missing that 3% means defeat. As long as the Queen Walkers can get that safe two-star, they will claim the golden ticket. U to 14, the queen charge dragon riders. You've seen how powerful this is. I feel it is a very comfortable two-star strategy in itself. As long as his queen gets enough value and enough percentage, push comes to shove. He can just send the dragon riders to the town hall. There's nothing else he would need to do, but in style, he is not going down without trying for that three-star. Accidentally turned the RC invisible there, but the queen very smartly takes that out. Is she going to go for the expos here? One of them could lock onto the healers, but I don't think it will do. I think she will get those down, battle blimp to the town hall, and it looks like that will fall. It's then only percentage he needs, Woody, to get the golden ticket for the Queen Walkers. 
builders furiously thrusting their hammers at the town hall trying to keep it up but there is no way to stop the damage from pouring in there Yuta 14 grabs the first star and is on a rampage through this base go ahead and grab your bongos because we're about to have a jam sesh Yuta 14 is slapping the base and ready to deliver his final solo performance the 50 percent threshold to be crossed will mean a golden ticket for the queen walkers judo you have the honors the king creates pathing beautifully for the queen the dragon rider is in at the top i'll be honest woody this looks incredibly good not just for that two star but the three star and there is the two star queen walkers are securing their golden tickets they are moving into the grand finals we already have alternate attacks tomp and i empire and now the queen walkers into that grand final the number one and two team from last year will the queen walkers get their revenge time will tell but here we go 45 seconds woody can he make it the three star it looks so so good right now for you to 14. A sliver of damage might have separated the Queen Walkers from a perfect war in this walk-off. They got a two-star earlier on, but Yuta 14 is not going to let it be anything less than 14. He is pumping his fist and excited about this final showing. He has done his country proud. Three teams from Japan with an opportunity to get the golden ticket, and the one has been secured. Your July Qualifiers World Championship team is the Queen Queen Walkers! Celebrate he should! What an amazing...